welcome back to Mexico Relocation Guide. My name is Mariana, and I'm happy to see you guys again. I'm so excited about today's episode. Today, we're going to show you a delightful place filled with history, an unmatchable peacefulness, pristine beauty, and above all, some of the warmest and most welcoming people we have ever met in Mexico. This is Aguascalientes. In this video, we're going to explain why we recommend Aguascalientes as a place to start your new life in Mexico. I'll give you an overview of things like weather, neighborhoods, things to do, medical services, and more. This small, peaceful city truly has everything you might be looking for. So, comencemos. Let's begin. Aguascalientes is one of the 32 states that make up the Mexican Republic. It's located in the central north of Mexico. Its capital city, named the same Aguascalientes, is located in the central south region of the state of Aguascalientes. It is considered part of the Bajío region, one of the most prosperous areas in the country. Now, the Aguascalientes metropolitan area is made up of three municipalities with a total population of just over 1 million people, of which 950,000 of them live in the city of Aguascalientes. The city sits on a valley at 1,900 meters or about 6,200 feet above sea level, and it offers a semi-dry climate throughout the year. The hot season goes from April through June, with average daily high temperatures of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The hottest month of the year in Aguascalientes is May, with an average high of 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 32 degrees Celsius, and lows in the 50s, or about 14 degrees Celsius. The cool season starts in late November, and it lasts until late February. The coldest month of the year is January, with an average low of 39 degrees Fahrenheit and an average high of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's still very comfortable, even in the coldest of the winter. We came to Aguascalientes in late August, and we experienced very pleasant weather. Mornings were cloudy and a bit chilly, around 58 to 61 degrees Fahrenheit or 14 to 16 degrees Celsius. Then a little before noon, the sun would come out and it would get kind of hot, but not unbearable. Nights are also chilly, the kind of type that you need a light jacket. Keep in mind that this area of Mexico tends to be very dry. I recommend always having sunblock, moisturizing cream, and lip balm if you're very sensitive to dry weather. So what's it like to actually live in Aguascalientes? Well, one thing that you might notice is how clean the city is. Unlike other towns that brag about their tidiness, this city is actually clean and tidy everywhere you go. Doesn't matter if you're in the working class or a fancy neighborhood. You just don't see trash bags piled up on the sidewalk or you don't see littering along the streets. It's really a clean city. Again, it feels peaceful here. It feels calm and laid back. The streets are clean. The air is fresh and not polluted. The roads are well maintained, the drivers are kind, and we didn't get stuck in any traffic jams. It just felt like Aguascalientes had a different kind of vibe than the rest of Mexico. Now, when walking, people always said buenos dias or buenas tardes with a big, genuine smile. The buildings and monuments are nice and well-preserved, and we even got free ice cream from a kind gentleman at the San Marcos Garden. However, do keep in mind that the city is growing and new industries are coming in, mainly the auto parts industry. We learned from locals that the city has a large Japanese population since Nissan opened an assembly plant here. Internal migration has also been a key factor in the growth of Aguascalientes. Many people from neighboring states have moved into town seeking to slow down their pace of life. So this is turning the city into a more cosmopolitan and diverse place, just little by little. The expat community though is tiny. A few foreigners have settled here as well as many dual citizenship Mexicans. However, don't expect a very active community when compared to other cities in Mexico that have a large expat community. Now, apparently the foreign population doesn't even reach a thousand people. And it seems like most of the foreigners who come here choose this place precisely for that, to immerse themselves in the culture and avoid other foreigners. So if you strongly consider Aguascalientes, it would probably be wise to take Spanish lessons beforehand so that once you arrive, you have at least the basics down, enough to interact with the local vendors and navigate the city and make you feel less like a fish out of water. One thing is certain here though, you'll find the true meaning of quality of life. 
Aguascalientes is a city full of wonders, and it's no surprise that finding a nice, safe, and peaceful neighborhood is going to be relatively easy. Now, if you've been following the channel at Mexico Relocation Guide, you probably know that we're known for organizing neighborhoods or areas of town and highlighting a couple of regions. The ones that are usually most appealing for people to find housing in or for people to live in. So in Aguascalientes, we are going to divide it by three regions that are the most appealing for living. Downtown, also known as Centro, which is divided into traditional barrios. The northern part of the city, which offers higher end living and the suburbs, primarily in the west and southwest areas of town. So let's start with Centro. The centro area stretches from the Barrio de San Marcos to Barrio de la Estación and surrounding neighborhoods. There are five traditional barrios, the city's oldest neighborhoods dating back to the 19th century, and several colonias, which are surrounding neighborhoods from the mid 20th century. So many of these neighborhoods and buildings have been remodeled to meet modern needs because as you can imagine, since they're from the 19th and 20th century, they can be pretty old. In the centro, one can find a range of housing from small studios to large homes with three or more bedrooms. Prices vary significantly, with one bedroom furnished studio starting around 6,000 to 7,000 pesos or around 300 to 350 US dollars a month. And of course, going up from there, up to 15,000 pesos or 750 US dollars a month, depending on the amenities, of course, depending on the, how modern it is, where it's located and those kinds of things, how big it is. Four bedroom houses in need of some work may cost around 10,000 to 12,000 pesos which is around 500 to 600 US dollars a month. While a nicely remodeled four bedroom house can cost anywhere between 20,000 to 22,000 pesos a month or more. That's around 1,000 to about 1,100, 1,200 US dollars a month, depending on the amenities and the overall quality. And of course, depending on the exchange rate. Now living in the Centro offers the benefit of being in one of the best connected and safest areas of the city. Aguascalientes is very safe overall but the Centro, as a tourist and business hub, has a significant police presence, which leads to lower crime rates. Now, most necessities are within walking distance, making it easy to get around without a car. However, those who are very sensitive to noise may prefer other areas as the downtown area can be quite busy and noisy with church bells, traffic, and neighborhood activities. Maybe even if you have a pet, it might be best for you to not live in the downtown area since most likely they will also be bothered by these noises. The northern part of Aguascalientes, located beyond the Avenue Convención de 1914, also known as Anillo Vial or Periferico. This is the suburban area of Aguascalientes. The region is home to basically open neighborhoods with big houses and wide streets, along with gated communities offering luxury amenities like golf courses, clubhouses, gyms, tennis courts, and pools. The area truly showcases the city's wealth with mansions occupying entire blocks. You'll see luxury cars parked in driveways, security, and those kinds of things. However, there are also more modest, family-friendly neighborhoods with townhouses which are perfect for a couple or for a small family. Prices in the north are, again, all over the place, with high-end three-bedroom houses priced at over 30,000 pesos a month, which is 1,500 US dollars, which is typical for this area, but very high for a local Mexican standard. But for those who search carefully, similar-sized homes can be found for 15,000 to 17,000 pesos a month, which ranges around 750 to 850 US dollars. Again, depending on the neighborhood, the amenities, the exchange rate, and when you're watching this video because of course prices can go up in the future. Now the outskirts of Aguascalientes, particularly the west slash southwest parts of the city, are home to newer suburbs and gated communities still under development. These areas are gonna be a bit more affordable while offering a lifestyle similar to the northern part of the city. In these communities, two-story, three-bedroom homes are gonna be the dominator here. And most privadas, which are again like gated communities, offer amenities like pools, gyms, green spaces, play areas for children, 
Garden and dog parks. Now prices for these houses range from 10,000 to 18,000 pesos a month, which is around 500 to 900 US dollars with amenities influencing the final price. However, living in these areas require a car or you're gonna be heavily relying on things like Uber or taxis as these suburbs are 15 to 20 minutes from downtown and daily conveniences like grocery store shopping, movie theaters, events, those kinds of things are gonna be less accessible. Now, in most of Aguascalientes' recommended neighborhoods, essential services like water, electricity, and gas are going to be readily available. However, it may be harder to find things like fiber optic internet on the outskirts, like, for example, the southwest area of the city that we talked about. However, we do think that for people who have a harder time finding fiber optic internet, and that might be something that's really important to you, we have heard good things about Starlink and local providers that offer satellite internet as an alternative. To give you an idea of utility bills and what you can expect things to cost when living in Aguascalientes, a two-person household's water bill will range anywhere between 400 to 600 pesos a month. That's 20 to 30 US dollars. And electricity is billed every two months by the CFA or the CFE. Typically, costs are going to be around 300 to 500 pesos if air conditioning or heating isn't necessary. Again, that's around 15 to 25 dollars every month. And then every two months, you can expect it to be about 600 to 1,000 pesos. Again, depending on your usage, the number of people in your household, or whether you have a mini split or air conditioning set up or not. Gas is going to be provided by companies like Gas and Marcos and Sony Gas. And you can expect costs to be around 600 to 700 pesos a month. That's 30 to 35 US dollars for a 30 liter tank. For some people that can go a really long way. For some people, they might use it a lot faster depending on how much cooking you're doing, how much you're running your propane gas to heat things like your water, run a dishwasher, possibly take a lot of showers, those kinds of things. Now, what about your shopping options? Well, most businesses and shops are going to be concentrated in the Centro area and its surroundings. While the North also has a wide selection of stores, many of these aren't necessarily local. Since the shopping dynamic in the North area leans more towards malls and big box supermarkets. So most traditional markets and small corner stores known as tienditas are located in the Centro or downtown area. Now, we visited Mercado Teran which was pretty big and we were able to find pretty much everything that you're going to need for your daily routine. Now, walking around most of the central area, you will find several stores such as carnicerias, which are butcher shops, dairy shops, which are cremerias, hardware stores, which are ferreterias, bakeries, panaderias, organic stores, and many more. And as I said, this is the best area for local businesses or local shopping. Now, in the north, we found one local mercado named the Mercado Agropecuario, a traditional Mexican market where you interact with local farmers and producers. There's also a fair number of local stores selling essential items like bread, cheese, dairy, meats, etc. The only difference is that since you are in the high end part of town, then prices might also be higher than if you were shopping in the downtown or centro area. But if you just really want to go to a big box supermarket or you're really keen on getting a specific brand, which you can only find at those supermarkets, you can find several of these on the north part of town. You have the local ones like Chedrawi, Soriana, Bodega Herrera, and Waldos. But there's also Walmart, Costco, and two HEBs in town. One is located in the north in the Pulgas Pandas neighborhood and the other located in the suburbs of the south. If you're looking for things like vegan stores or organic food options, you can find a good number of those in the Centro area. There's some organic and plant-based stores, and considering the size of the city, I would say that it's actually decently supplied. Now, what happens if you have a medical emergency? Well, in Aguascalientes, there's no shortage of medical services in the city. There are a lot of public and private clinics and hospitals offering great medical attention. We saw the most clinics and practices in the Centro or downtown area and the North area, but there are several others scattered across the city. So wherever you decide to live, you'll most likely have a medical facility nearby. For smaller issues, you can rely on the local pharmacy 
farmacias, which are pharmacies. Most of these have a doctor on site who is ready to treat most minor illnesses and usually can also write prescriptions, which again, you can get them filled at that same pharmacy. You can find these pharmacies anywhere in town. They'll usually say farmacia and then the name of the brand. There's also a fair amount of fitness and wellness centers around the city, as well as tennis or paddle courts. There's golf courses and green areas where you can go out for walks. In other words, you'll have a lot of options to also stay active. So now, how are you going to get around? Well, actually, we found that moving around in Aguascalientes was pretty easy. The streets are nice and clean, and we didn't experience having to deal with traffic jams. Driving was actually pleasant. Drivers are friendly, or at least way nicer than other cities across Mexico. And the infrastructure feels well-maintained. However, if you don't plan on having a car, we suggest staying in the centro or downtown area, or at least somewhere where you can easily get to that downtown area. Centro is a highly walkable area and it is also pleasant to walk around. Some neighborhoods up north are also very walkable with big parks and enough stores to get by without needing a car or at least where you can easily hail a taxi or call a taxi to take you there and bring you back. However, it does seem like the public transportation isn't really reliable on the north part of town. There are bus routes going north, however, they are less frequent, resulting in longer waiting times and really seems like overcrowded buses. Now we learned that the public transportation system, Yo Voy, is efficient mainly in the central area and some neighborhoods up north, but on the suburban outskirts, forget about it, it's a different story. As in other growing cities, the metropolitan transportation system is relatively new, so it's still struggling to provide an efficient transportation network for the entire city. For those who like taking taxis or rideshare, you'll be happy to know that Uber and Didi are available in Aguascalientes, so are taxis. And fares are very reasonable. For example, an Uber ride from the HEB in the Pulgas Pandas neighborhood to the Airbnb that we stayed in in Barrio de Guadalupe was 90 pesos, which is around $4.50, very affordable. And it was around a 15 minute ride, counting the waiting time. Now, for those who are wondering how you're gonna get here from abroad, there is an international airport and a bus station, which makes traveling to any major city in Mexico possible, as well as getting to Aguascalientes. If you're traveling through air, there are direct flights to cities in the U.S. like Chicago, Houston, and Dallas, Texas. So now that you know where you might live, what the cost of living could range like, where you'll do your shopping, what to expect for healthcare, you'll probably want to know what are you going to do with your free time? Well, Aguascalientes is a very calm place until it isn't. Aguascalientes hosts what is considered the largest fair in Mexico and one of the most important in all of Latin America. It's truly one of the places or one of the events that you really must see. This is known as La Feria de San Marcos or the San Marcos Fair. Think of it as like a big state fair. This is a one of a kind event with a lot of tradition and history that has become worldwide famous. Now it's estimated that over 8 million people visit the San Marcos Fair every year. That's a lot of people. This event lasts 24 consecutive days, during which you can enjoy concerts, expos, play, sports, rodeo shows, a lot of food from all over the country. The San Marcos Fair is the pride of Aguascalientes, and it truly is a spectacle. However, bear in mind that if you live near the San Marcos Fair, towards the east end of the central area, you'll have to deal with the noise of the festivities every year, as well as the traffic. Aside from the San Marcos Fair, the historic downtown is a beautiful and lively place to spend a nice night out. Whether you're looking for a nice peaceful dinner and a pleasant stroll around the many squares, or you want to get a couple of drinks and maybe dance for a while, you'll find it all in the Centro area. The North area is known for offering higher end restaurants and nightclubs. In this area, you'll find wine bars and fine steakhouses. There are also many malls and movie theaters, especially in the North part of town and the outskirts. Now, for those who like to stay active and prefer the outdoors, there are are hiking trails about 30 minutes away from the city's downtown and I mean they're beautiful. You also have a lot of pueblos mágicos within one hour drive from Aguascalientes. 
Now, Aguascalientes has a really great location for road trips, specifically if you want to get to other cities and explore other parts of Mexico. Getting to those areas is quick and easy. Guadalajara, for example, is three hours away. Guanajuato is two and a half hours away. Querétaro is four hours away. And Mexico City is six hours away. And all of those cities are completely different from one another. So whatever your idea of having a good time is, you'll certainly find it all in Aguascalientes. So do me a favor, if you are liking this video so far, please give it a like and let me know in the comments what you think about Aguascalientes. Has it grabbed your attention? I think the city deserves a lot of attention. It has a lot of potential and it offers a really good quality of life that is really rare nowadays. It's a really nice place. It does have its downsides, of course. It is dry, so therefore people that are really sensitive to that and need humidity might not love it here. You know, another thing is that it is kind of a growing city. So there is construction and there might be those kinds of things going on in the neighborhood that you're living in. It also doesn't have a huge foreigner community. So if you don't know a lot of Spanish, it might be a little bit harder for you at the beginning to make friends and really know how to get around. But we think that you should come and check it out for yourself. That's one of the best advices that we can give you is to schedule out the city or the cities in Mexico that you're thinking of moving to before moving here. And if you're interested in doing a relocation tour, we have great locals recommended throughout the country that can show you around and show you what it's like to truly live there. We also have them for Aguascalientes. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the comments down below. I also encourage you to check out our website, MexicoRelocationGuide.com. It has a lot of great information and a lot of good tips to help you with your research on moving to Mexico the right way. So that's it for today, amigos. I hope that you have liked this tour of Aguascalientes as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys in the next video. Nos vemos. Bye.